Welcome to the Urban Survivor channel and in this video I'm going to be sharing the contents of my Urban Bug Out Inch Bag. This bag is designed to last for 7 plus days in an urban survival situation but there are also items in this kit that would help me to survive outdoors for longer if needed and potentially relocate if coming back home is no longer an option. We're going to start off by looking at the bag and then taking a look at the main contents which are broken down into different modules like food, water, electronics, cooking, shelter, tools, hygiene, and more. And if you want to jump to a particular section for more specific ideas, I'll post a timestamp to them in the description below, along with links where you can purchase some of these items and help support the channel. As we go through the video, please feel free to share your thoughts and comments below, and let me know if you have any ideas on how to make this kit better. All right, so the bag I built this kit in is the 60 liter ultralight backpack from Gossamer Gear called the Mariposa. This bag weighs just under two pounds, and one of the main reasons I like it is because in addition to a large main compartment, it's got a ton of large expandable pockets around the outside, which make it easy to access some of the items that I might need to get my hands on quickly. It's also designed with backpacking in mind, and there's chest straps, a hip belt, and compression straps to help redistribute the weight off the shoulders and make it easier to carry. There's also a sleeve on the back for a sleeping pad which doubles as a frame for the backpack. I also like the fact that the look of this bag is more discreet and less tactical and it might make me less of a target. I also like to keep a good pair of hiking shoes and a hat attached to the pack with a carabiner. I picked up this pair of Adidas Terex free hiker shoes, slightly used on eBay for a good price, and I like them because they're relatively waterproof, they have good support, and they're really comfortable. All right, so we're going to start off by taking a look at what is perhaps one of the most important sections in the kit, which is the money section. Not only is it good to have some spare cash on hand in different denominations in case you experience a grid down situation, but depending on the circumstances, your best bet might be relocating to a different city, state, or even country. I also like to keep some personal files stored on a small flash drive as a backup to some of the other things stored on my phone. I also keep a Bitcoin hardware wallet in this kit, which would be the best way for me to discreetly transfer some wealth across borders if necessary. These days, Bitcoin is becoming more and more mainstream, and it would definitely be good to have some, especially if you need to relocate to a foreign country like Mexico. I know this would be highly unlikely, but you never know what might happen, and that's the main reason why people build bug out and inch bags in the first place. I also keep some gold coins in here as well, which I might be able to sell or trade for something, and it's also another compact way of storing wealth. Well, sadly, we all know what's happening to the dollar. The dollar is going down, and it's not a pretty picture, and it's not being sustained by proper policy and proper thinking. Inside, I keep a compass with some local maps and a state map as well, in case I need to bug out in areas that I'm unfamiliar with. There's also a book about edible plants in the state that I live in, which might come in handy in an extended survival situation. I also like to keep an old racquetball in here as more of a morale booster. How many escapes have you tried? Four over, seven under. These are some of the items in my clothing module. I live in Southern California and it doesn't get too cold here and we never have snow and only rain a few weeks out of the year. I like to keep three pairs of socks in my bag so I can easily rotate them in and out when they get wet to help prevent blisters. I also keep a beanie in here which will keep my head warm. This is a long sleeve moisture wicking bay leaf t-shirt which I would plan to put on as soon as I started walking on foot. I have found that these are the best kinds of shirts to do any kind of strenuous exercise in. Beneath that, there's a long sleeve thermal shirt to help me stay warm, and also a pair of athletic shorts. Above that, I have another pair of longer pants, which can be converted into shorts. And finally, on top of that, there's a short sleeve moisture wicking shirt. Inside of this stuff sack, I keep a down jacket. And next to that, there's some gloves and a frog togs poncho for rain, which I keep stored in one of the outer pockets on the backpack for quick and easy access. I keep a pair of sunglasses in the top compartment of the pack, along with some N95 masks and a gator mask as well. All right, so this is the food section of the kit, and there's a little over 16,900 calories total. And if you divide that by seven, you have about 2,417 calories a day for a week. I prefer small, individually packaged items because it's easier to keep track of how much you're eating, ration the items, and you can also share the food easily if needed. All the items in this kit can be eaten with zero preparation, but a few of the items would be enhanced with hot water. These are some fruit leather bars which have 50 calories each. 
I like to keep some Rolaids here in case I experience indigestion from eating something unusual. These are some noon tablets, which can be added to water to enhance the flavor and replenish electrolytes that you might lose from strenuous activity. I also like to keep some caffeine chews in here for a boost of energy because you never know what time you might need to bug out. Inside the big orange dry bag is seven packages of ramen and each of these has just under 400 calories and they also contain little packets of seasoning which you can also add to the oats to make a nice little soup. I've got 14 packets of oats here and each one has about 160 calories. This is a jar of sunflower butter which is very calorie dense and it can be eaten straight from the jar or mixed in with some oats for breakfast. I like to keep a total of 7 complete cookies and pro meal bars which have about 400 calories a piece and they're easy to eat on the go. This is a bag of nuts which has about 2800 calories and a bag of smoked sausages which has a little over 1500 calories. He's rigged a pulley system so he can eat sausage and work on his stupid drawings. I'm being creative. Inside this bag, I like to keep some tea, which is nice to sit and drink at night and relax, and it can also help to soothe your stomach. I also keep some two ounce containers, which I filled with sunflower oil for cooking, honey to add to the oats or to the tea, and some soy sauce for flavoring. This is the cooking and fire module of the kit. Even though most of the food in this kit does not require preparation, it would be nice to be able to boil water for the ramen and oats, and also to be able to rely on the warmth from the stove, which I'll show you in a minute. This is the MSR Alpine 775 pot, which I use for boiling water. And what's great about it is the fact that my Lixada wood gasifier stove nests inside it. This stove is great because all you need are some small pieces of wood to keep it going for a long period of time, and it can be used indefinitely. It's easy to light and virtually smokeless as well. This is a small CRKT eating tool for eating, a stainless steel sponge, and a small towel for cleanup. I also keep a two ounce bottle of Dawn dish soap in here as well. This is the fire kit, which I keep inside of a small plastic bag for some added protection against water. And inside there's a bag of cotton balls, which I dipped in wax as a fire starter. There's also a ferro rod and striker combo three lighters, some regular matches, and some stormproof matches from UCO, and even a small Fresnel lens, which can be used to start fires as well. This is the water module. Water is perhaps the most important thing in survival situations, and I have several different locations mapped out where I can get water, and I also like to keep two one and a half liter bottles of water ready to go on the outer pockets of the bag. In addition to a 516 Silcox key, which you'll see in the tool module, I also keep two 1.3 gallon water bags from a company called Smart Bottle, which are ultra durable bags that are not only good for storing and transporting water, but there's a ton of different attachments you can get, including one for a Sawyer Mini and other similar filters, which you can use to create a gravity fed filtration system for water. I also keep their travel size 750 milliliter bottle, along with some water purification tablets and a Sawyer Mini water filter, which is rated for 100,000 gallons of water. Now we're gonna dive into the electronic section of the kit. Most of these items are either rechargeable or can run on rechargeable batteries, which is important to me because I wanna be able to rely solely on the contents of this bag as much as possible. This is the Nightcore NU25 headlamp, which I keep on the top compartment of the bag, and this is my favorite USB rechargeable headlamp. This is my primary light and I like it because it's hand free and it has both white, red and high CRI modes and decent run times and weather resistance as well. This is a drop Vega AA flashlight which I keep in the hip belt pocket and it can also run on a 14500 battery which I keep inside. This is the RAV Power 15 watt solar panel setup which I plan to use to recharge many of the items in this kit. This is the rechargeable Reticast V115 radio, which can pick up AM, FM, and shortwave. This is an Olight i3e EOS, which runs on a single AAA battery, which I keep as a backup in case I run out of power from my AA's or rechargeable 14500 batteries. This is the Skillhunt E2A flashlight, which also can run on a single AA or 14500, and I keep a 14500 in here as well. This is the LED Lenser ML4, which is a small lantern that also can charge 14,500 batteries. So this is what I would plan to use to charge some of the batteries in my other flashlights. 
This is a good lantern to use inside the tent or outside the tent to light up a small outdoor space. I keep some spare earbuds for the radio here and also a USB wall and car charger and an assortment of USB cables to charge the devices in the kit. This is the tool section of the kit. These items are primarily useful for urban environments, but some would be useful for wilderness survival situations as well. First, we're going to check out the items which I keep in the outer pockets of the kit and then move on to the items stored inside the red bag. This is the Gerber Gator Machete Jr., which has a 12 inch fine edge blade on one side and a saw blade on the other, which would be useful for processing wood. This is a small Maxpedition pouch, which I keep in one of the outer pockets of the backpack. And inside I have my Leatherman Wingman multi-tool, a Milwaukee Fastback utility knife, a 5 16th Silcox key for accessing water from commercial water spigots, and a few carabiners. I also keep a Morniv fixed blade knife, a small plastic trowel for digging, a Leatherman Micra, another utility blade, a large can of Sabre pepper gel, and a 10 inch pry bar in the kit as well. Inside of the red bag, I keep a nine by 12 foot plastic sheet, 50 feet of paracord, a 20 foot gill net for fishing, which would also be useful in an inch situation because I live close to the Pacific Ocean. There's some quick steel, which is really strong and can be used to repair metal. I keep some aluminum tent pole repair tubes and a small roll of duct tape and two small tubes of super glue and some special tape that's used for repairing camping gear like tents, sleeping pads, and jackets. I also keep a handful of 14 inch zip ties along with three large three millimeter trash bags, a few more spare Ziploc bags, some doggy bags, some thin wire, and a small spool of fishing line. This is the shelter section of the kit. I have a few different locations scouted out where I could potentially set up camp that are close to the ocean, well hidden, and difficult to access. I keep a Kelty inflatable mattress pad which doubles as a frame for the backpack and it makes sleeping on the ground a lot warmer and more comfortable. This is the Eureka Solitaire tent which is a really light one person tent that's easy to set up. I've taken this tent with me backpacking many times and it's held up very well. Finally I keep a Sea to Summit 30 degree down sleeping bag in this kit which is plenty warm for me and if it gets cold I can toss on a thermal if needed. Here is the hygiene section of the kit and the first few items I keep on the hip belt pockets for a quick and easy access. It's important to keep your hygiene up and yourself clean to help prevent you from getting sick and it can also be a good morale booster as well. I keep some SPF 50 sunscreen, some insect repellent, a two ounce bottle of Purell which is also used for starting fires. There's some lip balm with sunscreen in it and a few dude wipes which you can use for going to the bathroom. Inside the yellow dry bag, there's three microfiber towels and a few larger dude shower wipes, which you can use to wipe off your whole body. There's a bunch more of the individual dude wipes in a plastic bag and some go towels, which require a few drops of water and expand into larger towels. I keep another two ounce bottle of body wash and shampoo, along with some floss and a travel toothbrush and toothpaste kit as well. For medical, I just keep an Adventure Medical 0.3 kit, which is designed for backpacking, and inside it's got a few different medications and some items for basic wound care. There's also some moleskin in there for blister prevention. This is an area of my kit that could probably use a bit more work and some additional training on my end to become better prepared to deal with medical emergencies. Here's a quick look at all of the items in the kit laid out one last time. Hopefully this video gave you some good ideas for your kit, and if you have any suggestions about how to make this kit better, please share them in the comments below. The bag weighs just over 45 pounds, which is somewhat on the heavy side, so if you have any thoughts about ways to make it lighter, they would be greatly appreciated. You can find links to a lot of these items in the description below, which will also help to support the channel along with some reviews on some of the items in the kit. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, and make sure to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one.